Hi, I'm Ceres. I think I'm okay at the game, and today I'm covering the basics of prisms, one of, if not the, most complicated parts in the game. Worth noting, Redstone's text guide, linked below, covers the hard mechanics and numbers in tremendous depth. The first issue that makes me die internally when done incorrectly is combinations. Prisms reduce the power of each additional beam, meaning that you only want two inputs. As you see in this example, despite the left arrangement having more ions, improper combinations yield less damage. Prisms also reduce the strongest beam first, meaning that you want to always combine beams of equal power when possible to minimize that reduction. Like the last example, improper combinations render the left arrangement inferior. I cry if I see someone doing this. Simply put, two beams of equal power only is the optimal way to combine prisms. In the community, one will often see the ratio of two inputs per one output when discussing ions ending up in binary tree patterns. This is also generally why ships that primarily use ions tend to have an even amount, but also often follow the doubling pattern of 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. An important side note, try to minimize redirection prisms, or prisms that both don't combine nor serve as outputs. Good designs will practically never use them, as they're inherently unnecessary and expensive. Additionally, I would be disappointed in you as well. The binary pattern, the 2 to 1 ratio as it were, though nice and clean, as previously mentioned reduces your raw damage since every combination reduces the overall damage, so long as you have more than one beam going into a prism. This results in having as many output beams as possible resulting in the most raw damage. As you can see, the left example, which has previously been the best, does less damage than the right one, while also being cheaper due to its high prism cost. It's also worth noting that the right example, despite going through more armor, still went faster. This is why high-end, competitive designs will never end in single beams. It's not an uncommon sight to see more than 5 outputs, as every combination that you drop effectively gives you more damage and budget. This concept can be exploited by ships like this one or this one, due to the higher efficiency of uncombined prisms, though this is a niche ion arrangement. An important trait to a beam core that makes it recognizable as a good or bad one is how many outputs it has. However, more is not always objectively superior. As prisms block each other, fitting more and more outputs requires increasing the spread of your beam core massively reducing your effective range and unfocusing your damage. You could theoretically widen the hole in the front of your ship to allow better firing angles, but as you're widening the hole in the front of your ship, you reduce your effective health. Some ion ship attempt to bypass this by having two barrels, but this comes at the cost of reduced shield overlap, which I can show by removing this armor. Normally these shields would overlap and increase effective health. If it wasn't clear already, there's a tremendous amount of different variables to juggle and work with when designing, well, any ship really, but especially so beam cords and the ship built around them. Thus far, I've been speaking about spinal prisms that you aim with your entire ship. Though these have inherently and significantly higher defensive value, freely rotating prisms have different properties to work with. As they're generally tracking something you targeted, they need to have space to aim otherwise they'll hit your own ship. For all that, you gain the ability to aim your kill that guy laser without needing to rotate your entire ship. This is extremely helpful at all ranges as it makes you more precise as well as more difficult for opponents to protect the parts they don't want you shooting at. Whether or not that's a worthwhile trade-off is a subject of great contention. But fortunately, those aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. On the condition of your ship utilizing large shields, you can incorporate adaptability into your design. By firing at your own armor, you can manually widen the channel and allow for aiming. This obviously requires a unique beam core, and mine here isn't perfectly suited for it due to the two spinal outputs in the back. But having the option available inherently improves the quality of your ship. Though having this flexibility comes at the cost of raw power, it allows you to utilize different tactics according to the situation and win against a larger variety of ships. 
Finally, I'd like to discuss some of the pros and cons for large versus small shields. Small shields have several things going for them, including being cheaper, more efficient health-wise, requiring no dead space to project into, as well as being more resistant to disruptors and EMPs. However, larger shields can overlap more total health in a given area, and due to their huge bank of 18 batteries, more crew can be refilling them, greatly reducing the chances of being knocked down. The extended projection can be good in that you can cover wider areas, but bad as it presents a larger target that might not have been otherwise hit. A huge thanks to everyone who assisted me in the making of this video. Consider wishlisting or purchasing the game on Steam or visiting the Competitive Communities Discord.